This is Mr. Kessler, and this is part three of my density video series. This one's entitled Irregular Shaped Objects. Let's quickly review some of the formulas we've learned up to this point. The formula for density is mass divided by volume. Mass over volume. This line right here means divided by. And then we also learned yesterday volume of a regular shaped object is length times width times height. That's the formula, length times width times height. If we can measure it with a ruler using length times width times height, that would be a volume of a regular shaped object. I also taught you the trick on how to remember the density formula using your heart. You put mass at the top, volume at the bottom, and this makes an M right here for the mass. And the bottom part of the heart makes a V for volume. So if you can draw a heart, you should be able to remember that mass goes at the top and volume goes at the bottom. Mass divided by volume equals density. All right, density of an irregular shaped object. Sometimes we have an object where we can't use a ruler to find the volume. Length times width times height won't work because the volume, excuse me, the object is irregularly shaped, like a rock or a mineral. Here's a piece of gold right here. You can see that its edges are all jagged. It's got little air pockets in it. I couldn't take a ruler and measure the length, width, and height of this and accurately get a volume. So we have to use another method when an object is irregularly shaped like this, and that is called displacement. Displacement is when an object is immersed into a fluid. That fluid is typically water. Let me go through some of the vocabulary here. It says when an object is immersed. Immersed means it has to go all the way underneath the water. It can't be any part of the object sticking up above the water. It's immersed into the fluid, and then it pushes the fluid that was once there out of the way, and that object now takes its place. That's going to make more sense when you see it here in just a second in a picture. Let's do a sample problem. It says, what's the density of the ring if the mass is 16 grams? So we have one piece to our puzzle. We have the mass at 16 grams. We still need to find the other two pieces of the puzzle, though. We still need to find volume first, and then once we have the mass and the volume, we can then find density. So it's a couple steps that we have to go through. Let's first find the volume. Okay, on the right here is a picture of a graduated cylinder. It says, step one, read the volume of water before dropping in the object. So you can fill up a graduated cylinder to whatever volume you want, to whatever number you want, as long as when you put the object in there, it doesn't overflow on the top, over the top of the graduated cylinder. In this case, it would be 64 milliliters. And I say it's 64 milliliters and not 65 milliliters because you have to read the volume of a graduated cylinder from the meniscus. And that's the lowest point on this water line right here. You can see on the edges, the water wants to kind of creep up and go up the side of the glass or kind of clings to the side of the glass. You read your measurement from the middle of the glass. That's the bottom part of the liquid, and that's also called the meniscus. So you can see that's at 64 milliliters. So we're going to call that our before measurement, 64 milliliters. And then we take the object and we drop it into the graduated cylinder. So we take this ring and drop it in there. The water level rises because it gets displaced. And then we read the volume again. It says read the volume of the water after dropping in the object. So afterwards, we have a reading of 68 milliliters. All right, so it rose from 64 to 68. Now, step three, it says subtract to get the volume. You have to subtract the after reading minus the before reading. So the after reading was 68 minus the before reading was 64, and we fill out it out. You fill it out, 68 milliliters minus 64 milliliters is four milliliters. That means the volume of this ring right here is four milliliters. Now, this is something that confuses kids a lot. They'll drop the ring in there or the object when they're doing the lab, and they're going to take the reading, they'll look and say 68, and they'll write down on their paper 
that it's 68. That's the volume of the ring. No, that's the volume of the ring and the water. We just want the volume of the ring. The volume of the ring and the water is 68, but the ring itself is only four because it was 64 to start with and it only went up four milliliters. So hopefully everyone understands that. Next, it says, we're gonna, I'm just rewrote the problem here. What is the density of the ring if the mass is 16 grams? And now we know the volume is four. I just copied this from the previous slide. We found that out ourselves using the displacement theory or displacement method. We can now solve for density. We have the mass, we have the volume. Okay, back to the same thing we learned on Friday, the same thing we did yesterday. Mass divided by volume. That's the formula for density. We substitute the mass in for what the mass is. That's 16 grams right here. That goes in the top. Four milliliters is the volume. That goes in the bottom. And then we have a fraction, 16 grams over four milliliters. Top dog in the house, 16 goes in the house, four outside the house, four divided by 16 is four with no remainder at all. And then you're gonna say, all right, the answer is four. And I'm gonna say four what? And you're gonna have to tell me that it's four grams per milliliter. Remember, on a regular shaped object, it was four grams per cubic centimeter, but on a irregular shaped object, you go back to your heart and you see it's grams per milliliter. So that unit of measurement changed a little bit. Even though a milliliter is the same thing, one milliliter is the same thing as one cubic centimeter, you're going to write it as grams per milliliter with an irregular shaped object like this. And you just get that from the information that you already have. So now you know how to calculate density. Uh, if I were to give you mass and volume, you could calculate it. If I were to give you a cube or a regular shaped object, you could calculate it. And if I were to give you an irregular shaped object, you could calculate it. You're a density pro. Let's go prove it. Thanks for listening.